The strategy of the world, y'all, will always drift us away from God. If you're just going through, it's just going to drift you right away from God. And the world will always try to magnify the things that are short-term to get you distracted and cause you to drift. And so more advice for the church from Paul. He tells us to fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is, unseen, since what is seen is temporary. It's short-term. It's a fake. But what is unseen is eternal. And so we all must have an eternity perspective going into this. I'm in it for the long haul. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be patient. I'm going to get through this. And so when sorrows and all that stuff, trials and all of that come, it's important for us to keep a, a, a heaven-minded focus. And the easiest way to do that is to switch up your environment every day. Because your perspective is just a product of your environment. And so I'll, I'll tell you what's worked for me for years. Um, the easiest way to, to fix your environment, to focus yourself more on Jesus, is to upgrade your music. Like, it's one of the simplest things that you can do is to upgrade your music. And I've been in church. I've been leading worship for well over two decades. I tell you how many, but then that ages me, and I can't tell anybody how old I am ever. Okay? Um, but I grew up. I grew up singing in church. And for a lot of that time, I wasn't as mature to read the word on my own, just being honest. But the fact that the things that were around me and I was singing were the word, the word still carried me. And so there are times in life when I can't get to a scripture, but I can get to a lyric because it's been ingrained in me. And so it's important that you put the word around you, people around you, because not just that. Now it's good because when I am reading and I'm studying the word now and I come across scripture, I'm like, wait. And it pops a song in my head. I've been singing that for years. You mean to tell me I've been singing the word over my life for years? Listen, I had my mama. Had my mama bring me one of our church hymnals because the, 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 more, the more excellent we get with our music, um, the, the more I, 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 these things come to my mind and they come to my head and I can just, I can turn to just about anything. Look at that, 279, standing on the promises of Christ my King. Like there's, there's not much in here because it's been surrounded by my life for over 20 years. What a fellowship we have in Jesus. Like, when peace, hey, Jesus, when peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my life thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. That's the word. That's the word. But I didn't know it was the word until I grew up and started to read the word for myself. And so, number one, upgrade your music. Number two, choose to have joy all the time. Like, quit looking at the stuff that you have lost and look at the stuff that you have left. <laughs> like, the key, the key to perpetual optimism in life is to continuously be thankful. Continuously remind yourself what God has done for you, who God is, what God calls you, who your identity is. Remind yourself who God is in your life. And when, when the trials and all of that come, this is between you and Jesus and nobody else. So be real with Jesus. Be real with Jesus. There's a whole section in the book of Hebrews where the author is trying to get them to understand that Jesus is what they would call a high priest. And so they had this mindset from all of the old stuff that they had learned that they had to go through somebody. That they, because once upon a time in the Old Testament, there's a priest and you had to go to the priest and tell them all about, you know, all the stuff that you did. And then they would go and take it before God. But Jesus has come to remove the barrier between you and him. So when life comes, it doesn't have to be life obstacle Jesus. It could be life Jesus. When it comes to you and Jesus at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be a uh, uh, life trial, Jesus. It could be you, Jesus. Life, Jesus. Hebrews 4 tells us to boldly come to the throne of grace. Boldly come to the throne of grace, which is God's presence. That's that throne thing. Boldly come into God's presence of grace. That we may obtain mercy and grace. Those are the two things God has available for you. Mercy and grace to help you when you come into times of need. Doesn't say that you won't have times of need. 
It says, when you do come into God's presence, his throne, and he will give you grace and mercy. And he doesn't just say come. He says come boldly. Come boldly. That's not, that's not pretentious. That is consistently. That is confidently. Understanding that when you go to God. See, the deep fake of the world is that when you get into God's presence that he's going to judge you. <laughs> that he's going to judge you. But the truth of that is God said the finished work of the cross, what Jesus did on the cross, was the judgment for the earth. And when you come into God's presence, he's not there to give you mercy and judgment. He comes to give you mercy for your mistakes and grace for your gifting so that you can use everything that he has put inside of you and you can be happy. 